Oh, JD here. And as you can see, we are not on F122 here today. In this video, we are going to be discussing some of the games that I have loved the most from this F1 series. And to try and make it a little bit more positive, <laughs> because I know... A lot of people at times think I'm always wanting to be negative or rambling on and you know, why do you play these games then? But the answer to that is because it's been a big part of my life for a long, long time and I really want to try and see an improvement in this series and I think that's what players of the game deserve, the fans deserve of the game itself and people who've been playing for quite a long time. I'm determined to hopefully make it better and that's the idea of it rather than just give up and uh, play something else but I will be playing other games as well to give them more of an opportunity because I think games such as Assetto Corsa, iRacing and R Factor, Automobista they definitely deserve a lot more attention than it does but this game here is F1 2018, and this is actually a poll app that I did quite a few years ago now against a, a very competitive grid. And this game is quite special to me. And you'll be able to see here, managing to get the poll over CRG Simon, Syra, Pinecone, Veloce Surprise, which is Josh Idawu, so a couple of eSport drivers who are in the current esports series now and yeah we are back on this game and i haven't played it for a very very long time but i will talk about why in my opinion i feel it's one of the most underrated formula one games that we've had in recent times and you'll see here that my current podium will doesn't want to connect to it for some reason. Well, not for some reason. It's not really a, a huge surprise at all because the podium wheel didn't exist back then. So that means we have to go back to the roots, which means going back on the controller. And throughout this video, I'm just going to be doing a bit of a time trial just to see how quickly I can get back in the swing of things and use it as an opportunity to just talk about this game also some previous F1 games and again have a bit of an open discussion with you so please let me know what your thoughts are of F1 2018 and what you think has been maybe the best recent F1 game as we're a bit upset our wheel is uh, not connecting here but please let me know what your thoughts are of maybe in the last you know, five six years what you think has been the, the best F1 game. I also think F1 2020 uh, was quite underrated as well, and I will probably be doing a video on that shortly. But F1 2018 for me was quite special because I was actually, well, first qualified for F1 Esports as a driver, and I actually competed in F1 Esports back in 2018 managed to get fifth in my very first race on my debut actually from I think P11 on the grid which was I think one of my best races I've ever done because I actually qualified for the series on the controller and if you're new to the channel or you haven't been watching me for a while I used to be on the controller for you know, a good six to seven years at a competitive level and then I finally switched to the wheel on this game the first wheel video I ever did was on F1 2018 as well. It was a big learning curve and a lot of pressure to learn the wheel quickly for the eSports series and only really having maybe a month or two months of getting used to the wheel. Coming fifth in my first ever eSports series race, which you, if you look it up, you will confirm I'm telling the truth. It was a, a pretty special experience for me, but Aside from that, I just found the game to be incredibly fun. I know we have bugs and glitches, which we have discussed in the video recently, and 
there definitely was no shortage of those in this as well. But for the most part, the online did work very well. The force feedback on the wheel and the, also the controller, which after this video actually felt quite nice compared to F1 22 where I had a bit of a go on the controller recently on the PlayStation and it was almost impossible and with the force feedback and the input delay it felt significantly harder than it did on this game and no, this game wasn't realistic at all it was nowhere near close to really being realistic as you will see throughout this video we're actually using the first gear at the hairpin which was the birthplace of extra rotation <laughs> which I always used to say quite a lot so a lot of memories of this game and you'll also see the way we're using the gears I know some people might be commenting saying oh why are you letting it rev out in the gears I think we don't do it just yet a bit later in the video itself going down the straight we don't even go up into eighth gear at all because the engine braking was very very powerful and if you're in a lower gear it was gonna help you slow down much quicker and you actually didn't lose any time revving it out in seventh gear compared to going to eighth but then if you go into eighth you just don't have the benefit of the engine braking or anything at all so it was definitely far from realistic but just how it felt it just kind of like the same as 22 at the start of the game it just felt fun and it felt like there was probably an even bigger skill gap the traction the braking felt consistent also in this game the tire temperatures and the tire wear model i think was one of the best it's ever been because if you ran a set that was too oversteery your tires would be absolutely dying in the race and I think on the more recent games the tire wear is kind of scripted it doesn't really make any difference the way you drive or anything at all if you have the same setup you're pretty much going to have exactly the same wear all the time whereas I remember in this game in league racing you sometimes especially tracks such as like Singapore and Hungary you had to intentionally take it easy on the first few laps let others wear out the tyres and you know, get the tyre temperatures in as well and then you would be OP for the rest of the stint so there was just a lot more tactics involved because I think on the recent games as well the especially on F122 with the now starting on the mediums and the hards and there isn't really so much of a difference between them there isn't so much you can do anymore and we even see that in F1 Esports although it's been exciting mainly because of the weather it, there isn't really much you can do on the strategy whereas on here you had and I think we got the hyper soft here the super soft the mediums the hards it was I know it's down to a bit of the regulations as well but just the overall experience and the feedback you got from the game it was just consistent and it was just fun and there was definitely a skill gap involved and the multiplayer worked fairly well and it, it just felt a lot more satisfying to play and I really do think 2018 just all round was a very a very solid game which is a game I think a lot of people do forget about as well because we did have tracks like Hockenheim I'm not sure what other tracks we did have but just the menu layout and everything maybe you appreciate games once they've been and gone maybe that might be the case with f1 22 and i think it's the same with anything in life when you no longer have it you tend to maybe appreciate it a bit more but i don't know if i'll feel that way about uh, f122 at the moment because yeah i just felt like it started off so well but we've already done pretty much a whole video on that if you want to go and check that out but 2018 it was just I remember just looking forward to playing it and if you're looking forward to playing a game and it's been out for eight or nine months already that's usually a good sign and I think this is kind of where 
really league racing kind of took off that next level. Obviously, with the rise of F1 Esports, this was the first game for F1 Esports. And yeah, it was just really, really good. Or actually, I think 2017 was the first game because they did the Abu Dhabi finale. But yeah, this is where maybe Esports went to the next level, playing in the Gfinity Arena. Uh, and things such as that as well. But let me know what you think has been the best Formula 1 game by Codemasters. I think it's no secret. Maybe games such as 2012 and 13, I think were probably maybe a little bit ahead of its time. I think even games such as 2006. I think 2006, the Championship Edition, was one of the most immersive a career mode experiences you could get which is why I feel we should be on another level to what that is now but no I've already said what I think should be done with this series but I think you don't need to reinvent the wheel you just need to kind of simplify it and just kind of make sure the fundamentals are working you can see here we were using the stock setup at the start I was looking down at my controller because it wasn't letting me actually look into uh, what the setup was so I couldn't make any changes and straight away almost losing the car because it is um, very very twitchy and it's definitely a little bit harder to control on the controller itself but we're going to see how much we can improve so I think we did a 11.5 as our best best ever done round here was actually a 10.1 so let's see how close we can actually get with the controller itself so we're going to be showing a number of laps here just to see the progression you can see now we're holding it in that seventh gear because you get that engine brake and then going down to first gear for the extra rotation feels good to be saying that again actually i have missed saying that <laughs> quite a lot something uh, you don't do now because now you want to be using really really high gears which again is realistic oh sorry not realistic but again it might just be down to personal preference some people may love the handling on f122 but for me maybe it just doesn't suit me but i just don't feel but I'm confident in... Uh, it's really hard to predict for me for some reason, but on these games here, although it certainly wasn't realistic in the opposite sense, it just felt fun. And I remember we just always had a really, really good time playing this game online. Um, I think you had the time attack as well. Online lobbies were really easy to find. Nothing took ages to load into the game itself. And I think back then the Xbox Series X didn't even exist I think it was just the Xbox One um, that we had and yeah, even the sound and just how the curbs felt here and even just on the controller the controller feedback was actually uh, really really good and you know, this is me just playing for 20 minutes I think if we you know, as I was I was playing this day in day out I actually qualified for F1 Esports winning qualification I think a Spain race I did on the controller I think I switched from the wheel to the controller when it when I knew it was going to be wet weather because in the wet weather the controller was actually arguably quite OP on this game itself but yeah it definitely brings back a lot of good memories and that's just what I want for these new games I just want that fun back to back and now there's always going to be bugs and glitches but just having a bit more of a connection to the game no matter what the handling model is just feeling more connected to the car no matter if you're on a wheel or a controller and you, know, you don't have to spend ages trying to find online lobbies and all these things and everything you know which other people have experienced just keep it simple and just get the fundamentals working and then usually the racing kind of takes care of itself but this is actually the fastest up I did because I was very desperate to get into the 10 so as we go through this turn one a pretty bad turn one that wasn't really that good um, at all coming into hit break just before 100 meter board going into the third gear really aggressive on the power so it wasn't really difficult on traction 
on this game. So we'll get Nadir sign here and we're going to keep it in seventh gear. And I know a lot of people will be tearing their hair out, but honestly, this was the fastest way. Then going down all the way to first gear to get that extra rotation, short shift into second. And we lost most of our time in the first sector, but for the rest of us lap, and we actually didn't lose a huge amount of time, but going into this one here, we missed the apex, going on the curb on the exit, but still keeping somewhat of the speed. So we did actually lose a bit of time there. But now coming through this last sector, it's about almost eight temps down. And I think we were almost on a par of what I did before on the wheel using the uh, controller here. As we're coming through this last sector, I absolutely love these final two corners at Hockenheim in Germany. And coming off this last corner, getting a really good exit, getting a dearer sign and going across the line. It's a 10.9, which I think we could probably do a mid 10, but it's just really, really hard through some of the corners just to get that precision with the controller. But that was a little return to the past and that definitely gets my approval. I really, really miss playing this game. And I do think it's one of the most underrated ones. Please let me know what your thoughts are. What's been your favorite F1 game? Thank you so much for supporting the channel. I'll be catching you very, very soon. Peace.